Okay, we are live. Hey there, how is it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward, with the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Live video chat for Friday, October the 4th. And today, as always, I'm going to be hanging out here for the next hour and answering any questions that you may have about building muscle, losing fat, getting back in shape, any specific challenges that you're dealing with when it comes to your workout or your nutrition program, feel free to post those in our video chat window and I'll do the best that I can help you out during today's video chat. Uh, I do apologize for the delay in getting this set up. I, I, I was here on time, ready to get it going. And for some reason, the, the settings that I had saved would not run. So I, I couldn't load the default settings that I normally do. And then I was in there screwing around with YouTube. I mean, like you, YouTube is always changing the settings and then and, and the, the behind the scenes stuff. Now, I know it's for the greater good and they're trying to make the system as run as efficient as possible. But in these transitions, it's it's annoying because it, it went very, the old way was so simple. I mean, I, of course, I knew the old way. Now they've got it changed and it's a bit more complicated and, and I couldn't get it set up on time. So if, I know for those of you who are, like 3 30 p.m eastern time you're boom you're there waiting on time hey I, I am a bit late i mean i was here as well but i just couldn't get the darn thing <laughs> to stream but we got it up and running now so that's the main thing yeah i got a wooly on my shirt there look what is it i do have a wooly huh. all right anyway um, so the way this works is if you have any questions, feel free to post those in our video chat window and I'll do the best that I can to help you out. So uh, let, let's just take it away. We have Chris joining us, KM's joining us, Elmer, Frederick. Cool. Thanks, guys. Let's see what we got. I'm assuming this is coming through loud and clear. If it is, please let me know. Right? I don't want to be talking to dead air. So if you can hear me, if you can see me, type into the video chat, say that it is loud and clear. Loud and clear. Dan's saying, thank you, thank you. Good, awesome. And if you're brand new, I want to welcome you to our video chat. Uh, so if you are new to this, type in the letter N into the video chat to let me know that you're new. And if you're a regular, you tune into these things every single week, type in the letter R and let me know, right? I want to know who's new, who's regular, and... I appreciate both. I appreciate the, the support of the regulars coming back. And of course, if you're brand new, it's nice to have our family growing. All right. We got a lot of regulars tuning in. Cool. All right. Let's 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 just jump on board. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Elmer, brand new. Welcome, Elmer. Glad to have you joining the video chat for the first time. And if there's any questions you have, feel free to post them. We'll take it away. So uh, let's just make sure this is through this there we go cool all right all right so kms uh joining oh, okay first question here i've got a question what do you do to protect your kidneys um <laughs> are, are, are we are we talking about fitness nutrition are we talking about boxing right you want to block you know so you don't get a kidney punch there or something like that right uh what do i do to protect my kidneys quite honestly i just live a healthy lifestyle i don't particularly do anything to harm the kidneys and I don't do anything particularly to really focus on saving the kidneys other than drinking lots of water, eating natural unprocessed foods, just living a clean healthy lifestyle. Like I don't consume any alcohol. I don't do any recreational drugs. I, I eat natural unprocessed foods and I basically just try to live as clean and healthy life as I can. And indirectly all that kind of stuff is going to take care of all those internal organs, including the kidneys. But I don't have a specific like this is your kidney cleanse type of program or anything like that. It's just living a healthy lifestyle and it's going to look after all those things. Uh, Frederick's joining in. He says, how do you do seated calf raises without a machine? Do a search for Lee Hayward home gym calf workout. I think it is. Ah, freaking, I'm going to open it up on a, a new window and type it. If you type in Lee Hayward, I calf exercises let's just see i've got a bunch of calf videos um yeah home gym calf exercises so type in lee hayward home gym calf exercises and i'll show you some seated calf raise variations as well along with some standing calf raise variations that you can do with free weights you don't need any special calf raise machine 
I mean, of course, the calf raise machine does make it a lot easier, but don't use that as an excuse to uh, neglect your calf training. So just do a search for that video. In fact, for the heck of it, for the benefit of people who are tuned in right now, I'm going to uh, just share that link right in our video chat. Why not? So home gym calf workout. Boom. Right down the bottom. Now, don't watch it right now. Stay tuned for the video chat and go watch it afterwards. <laughs> but the link is posted there in, in the video chat window. Okay. 13 DB joining us. Dan is joining us. First Revenge. When uh, Lee, when you're squatting, do you push with the center of your feet or the heel? Or do you think, which do you think is more optimal? I have to consciously think about that because I just squat. <laughs> I don't. Um, I would probably more, I, I guess it's kind of center of the feet, but I might have a bit of heel drive in there. I, I, honestly, it, I, I, when I squat, like I do it on the subconscious. Like I don't consciously think of, okay, am I pushing through my heels or my foot? But when you're learning an exercise, you kind of have to put it in the, sub, in, in the, in the conscious mind. But once you've been doing it for so long, you just kind of go into subconscious mode. Like you just do it without actually consciously thinking about it. And that's when you really know something is when you take it from the conscious and put it into the subconscious where you just do it. Um, but kind of thinking now, I would probably drive more through the center of the foot, I think. I would probably more center the foot. I mean, if you do have a bit of heel drive, it's not necessarily bad, but it's... It would re Another thing that would depend whether you're squatting more through the heel or the center of the foot is whether you're squatting with your heels elevated or not, right? Like if you're wearing squat shoes or you're elevating your heels, that's going to drive you a bit more forward uh, in your squat as well. If you're doing more of a flat-footed squat, it, it will probably just change the way that you're going to push through your feet. But hmm, personally, yeah, I, I kind of am more of the, uh, the, the center of the foot. If, if I had to give it some conscious thought. Now, I mean, of course, when I'm in the gym under the barbell, I can actually set up and, and do the repetition and say, okay, yeah, I feel it more where in a certain part of the foot or not. But right now, just based on, on without actually being under the barbell, I would say more center of the foot is where I would probably do most of my uh, pushing, if you will. All right, let's see what else we've got um, to do. Moises is joining us. Uh, KM, Chris. Okay. Nutrition and supplements. Um, that's from Elmer. I don't know what you mean by that. If you want to elaborate on that, feel free to do so. That's not really a question. That's kind of just two. That's three words. <laughs> uh, Abram is joining us. He says, I'm pretty athletic, but I always feel dehydrated. How can I... How, how can I get even more hydrated. I drink only water. I don't drink Coke or anything. You always feel dehydrated. It could be electrolytes as well. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, all those things can come into play. It's more than just drinking water. So if you're feeling dehydrated, you might want to try literally focusing on the electrolytes. Now, in, in my case, like what I went to the gym before this video chat, and what I take before I go to the gym, I'll take uh, like a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'll have some uh, potassium. In my case, I like to use cream of tartar just because that's pure potassium. And I'll take like a quarter of a teaspoon of that. And I'll take a magnesium supplement tablet. And I'll have that and I'll just chase it down with a glass of water. And that helps to give me the electrolytes that your body needs. Right, because when you're sweating, you're you're sweating out sodium, you're sweating out potassium, you're sweating out magnesium. I mean, you need to replenish that stuff. So I, as a pre-workout, I take that in advance because I know that when I go to the gym, I'm going to be sweating that stuff out. So I find that that makes a big difference. If I don't take that in advance, very often I'll end up cramping or I just don't feel as good when I'm working out. But I find that having that sodium and the pat, the potassium and magnesium in your system in advance, it actually allows me to feel better when I'm in the gym. So that's something that you might want to try. And if you do a search, I've got videos about this already, but um, let's just, let me just see some videos here. Just do a search for Lee Hayward sodium. And you'll see a bunch of them 
uh, different videos that I have talking about sodium and how you can use it as a pre-workout. There's another one there on pre-workout electrolytes. But yeah, just do a search for Lee Hayward sodium and you'll see a bunch of different videos that I've made about that topic. And that can go a long way into making you feel more hydrated and better prepared for your workouts. Ken is joining us. Ken from the UK said, just started push-pull legs. Love it. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. I actually filmed the leg workout today. That's what I did today at the gym. So I was in there. My wife, Patricia, was with me, and we filmed the leg workout. That will be um, – I'll, I'll send it off to my video editor over the weekend, and hopefully we'll have it ready to go for early next week. So that will complete that new training series. And, of course, then I will have that in the Total Fitness Bodybuilding app as well. That's going to be just another workout in there. Like right now in the in the Total Fitness Bodybuilding app, we've got a lot of different programs in there, right from basic beginner programs, intermediate, advanced, all kinds of different training splits. So, I mean, if you're looking for some workout variety, the Total Fitness Bodybuilding app has a ton of different workouts in there. Plus, there's a full exercise database, meal plans, nutrition uh, tips, uh, high protein recipes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, right? I try to make it a kind of like a one-stop shop for, for getting a lot of uh, fitness and nutrition advice in one spot. So, I mean, if you are looking for like a, a kind of a crash course and how to get started and, and, you know, just to optimize yourself right from the get-go, Total Fitness Bodybuilding app is a great place to get started. So that will, uh, those workouts will be added to the app as I get them uh, published and uploaded as well. Frederick's joining us. He says, I've seen your video about trap workouts. Did you have a, a day where you do only traps uh, in a back day? You do bodybuilding day. Sorry, sorry I'm getting tongue tied here. Do you have a day where you only do traps back in you bodybuilding in your bodybuilding days? I am a regular on the chat. Thanks for the advice. I don't have a, a trap day, right? I, I would never go to the gym and just train traps. I mean, it's too small of a body part to have its own dedicated day. I would throw it in usually with a back day. Uh, sometimes I'd throw it in with a shoulder day. Like, it, it depends. Like, some people consider traps part of the shoulder. Some people consider part of the back. Technically, it, it can be both, right? Because, I mean, it... If, if you're training shoulders, a lot of times you're doing work for the rear delts and upper back. If you're training the back, you're also doing some work for the upper back. So if you're trying to pair it up in a complementary fashion, either with back or shoulders is where the traps would fit. But honestly, you could throw it in with any workout. It really doesn't matter. Like you don't have to have your workouts all pair up perfectly. I mean, you can do like a, a, a total body workout for that matter. Um, but another great one that you can do for your tra traps is like as a finisher, do some farmer's walk at the end of a workout. I mean, that's a great, I mean, it's like a total body finisher, but it really has a lot of emphasis on the traps and upper back as well. So there, you don't have to have a specific day or whatever. I mean, and for that matter, if your traps are a stubborn body part that you'd like to build up, there's nothing wrong with doing a little bit of trap work with every workout. Like if you're in the gym three or four days a week, you can throw in some trap exercises every single time you go to the gym if you want. Like one day you can do like barbell shrugs. Next day you can do dumbbell shrugs. Next day you can do farmer's walk, right? There's there's nothing wrong with breaking it up like that as well. You know, for these smaller muscle groups, uh, I find more frequent lower volume workouts tend to, tend to work better. Like when I'm training abdominals, for example, like I don't have an ab day where I'm going to go in and do nothing but abs. I'll add it in as an extra along with the workout that I'm doing that day. So, I mean, I could be doing, you know, primarily like a push workout, chest, shoulders, triceps, and then I'll throw in some abs at the end. Or I could be doing, you know, back day, you know, primarily hitting the lats and the spinal erectors, but I'm going to throw in some traps in there as well. You know, you can basically just put it in there where you feel like you want to. Oh, let's see what else we got. Um, Frederick says, I, oh, I think that's the same question. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, Omar is joining us. He says, should you do push-ups before the workout as a warm-up? You can if you want. Uh, it's a great warm-up for a, a pushing workout, like a chest, shoulders, triceps to do some push-ups. Uh, some people, depending on your strength and, and fitness level, the push-up may be challenging enough to do as an actual exercise. Like instead of bench presses, you could do push-ups. And I've actually recommended that to a lot of my coaching students. Like, it depends on, on your your fitness level, and it depends on how many push-ups you can do. Like, 
if you are in awesome shape and you can just bang out like high reps of push-ups, then you might want to save it for a finishing exercise to do at the end of the workout when your muscles are already pre-exhausted and fatigued because they're going to be more challenging at the end of the workout. However, if you're not very strong at push-ups and you find them very challenging, then you might want to do them earlier in the workout when you're fresh and full of energy so that you can maximize the number of repetitions that you get. So it, it really depends where you want to put them in there. I mean, I, I find that they can be a great warm up and they can be a great for, for a high rep finisher. And in certain situations, it could be the, the, the main compound exercise of, of a chest workout, right? I mean, you could go in there and, and do three to four sets of push ups, and that could even give you a, a more of a pump than three to four sets of bench presses, right? In fact, if, if, if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, when you do body weight exercises like push-ups or pull-ups or squats or anything where you're moving your entire torso through space, that has a higher level of neuromuscular activation compared to exercises where you just move your limbs. So if you wanted like one of the best chest exercises that you could do, weighted push-ups or some form of resistance push-ups would give you a better pump than even something like a, a bench press or, or whatever. Like dips, for example, that's another fantastic one. A dip is, is basically just another push-up variation because you're just basically doing a push-up on a different angle. But same thing, like you can get such a deep muscle pump and so so much muscle stimulation through doing body weight exercises uh, that you don't get that same level of neuromuscular stimulation from exercises where you just move your limbs. So that's why I'm a big fan of doing both body weight as well as you know free weight uh, machines. You know, I like to do it all. But I find that including body weight exercises in there, great way to really maximize muscle stimulation. And of course, push-ups are one of my favorites. Uh, in, in my case, I like to do them throughout the day, right? Like even, like, like for, for no rhyme or reason, like throughout the day, I'll just hit the floor and bang out a set of push-ups. Like sometimes when I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for the coffee to perk, right? I'll just hit the floor and just start banging out push-ups, right? Or sometimes I'll bang out body weight squats or lunges or something like that. I mean, I... Literally, like that was something I, I I did this morning. I was boiling the kettle for my oatmeal, and while I was waiting for the kettle to boil, I was just doing body weight squats just to get some extra extra workouts. Right, you can do that throughout the day. Like, there's no rules. So like, you're allowed to do extra workouts and find body weight exercises like that are a great way to uh, to throw in that extra workout. They just give you a little bit of muscle stimulation, a little bit of pump, a bit of metabolic stimulation, burn up more calories. Right, so. Uh, that, that's some of the stuff that I like to do throughout the day, in addition to going to my work, gym and doing workouts, right? I mean, these are kind of just like extra bonus workouts. They, they only take a few minutes. I mean, it's, it's something that's not going to really break down your body because you're not doing it to the extent where, you know, you're getting exhausted and sore or anything like that. But it's just a little bit of extra activity, a little bit extra muscle stimulation, and it can, uh, can help to aid with your progress over the long term, right? When you compound it over the course of several weeks and several months, Little, little extras like that can really add up. All right, let us move on. We have Ultimate Andy joining us today. Not just any Andy, but we have the Ultimate Andy. And he says, Lee, when I'm doing side lateral raises with dumbbells or cables, I feel it more in my traps. Any advice? You, you will feel it to a degree because, I mean, it's, it's all connected. Like even when you're doing a lateral raise, your traps do contract as well. Um, what, how, how would I, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if, if you're doing it for a deltoid exercise and your traps are kind of taken over, then you might want to definitely play around with that and see what you can do. Um, th there's different machines available, uh, for training your lats or your, not your lats, your, your delts and side lateral raises. That's where I'm getting confused. Uh, there's another variation that you could even try as well where you lie down on like an incline bench. You look at some of the old school pumping iron pitchers. You see some pictures of Arnold doing this where he's laying down on a bench and he's doing side lateral raises, laying down on the incline bench like that. That may help isolate that side head of the deltoid more. So that might be one that you want to try like as a pre-exhaust movement before getting into uh, the other variations. So you might want to do a couple high rep sets of that. And another thing that I would definitely recommend to really isolate the side head of the deltoid when you're doing lateral raises, use very lightweight 
and focus on super strict form. Sometimes when you're lifting too heavy and there's a little bit of swinging, a little bit of momentum in there, you're getting more of the traps and upper back. Whereas if you take a lighter weight, really keep your arms rigid and just focus on, you know, doing that nice strict uh, side lateral raise. That's when you can really feel the, the side delt contract to, to the max. But if you're using a bit of a, a swinging momentum, heavier weight, you, you tend to get more of the upper back in there. So lighten up the weight, tighten up the form and uh, give that uh, incline bench side lateral raise variation a try as well. And that should help to isolate those side delts for you so that you're not uh, turning. So you're actually using it as a, a delt exercise, not a trap exercise. All right, let's see, where was I now? I kind of lost my place there. Um, all right. All right, Moses is joining us. Uh, says, Lee, do you have any videos or tips regarding growing your forearms uh, slash traps? I would also consider rest, consider resting between days to maximize your mass potential. I've been doing six to 10 reps lately. Um, forearms, yeah, let's see what I got here. Go to, well, I've got a, a free report that I'm going to send you. Let me just get that up here now. Um, try to think. There we go. This is a, a PDF report that I wrote. It's called Huge Freaky Forearms, right? You got to love the name of that. And you can download it. Uh, I just posted a link there in our video chat window boom so you can go download that but you can also just do a search for youtube like lee hayward forearms i've got some videos there it covers different forearm exercises another one that that's really good for forearms and it's underrated heavy grips hand grippers or any type of grip and training when you train your grip you're working the muscles of the forearms all right a lot of people think you need to do wrist curls and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong with doing wrist curls but if you really want to maximize forearm development focus on getting a strong grip because it's, when you're working your grip it's the muscles of the forearms that come into play like there, there's very little muscle in your hands it's mostly tendon and ligament i mean yeah there's a little bit but the meat is in the forearms right so when you make a fist right it's your forearms that, that's that's contracting and if you get a stronger grip and focus on really increasing your grip strength that's indirectly going to carry over into making your forearms bigger and I've shared this story before. I mean, if, if you're a regular, you probably heard me say this, but uh, back when I started gripper training in the mid 2000s, uh, I, I made great gains in forearm size just from getting stronger with my grip. And it was all directly through using heavy grips, hand grippers. And that's how I became such a big fan of them. And I literally added a solid inch to my forearms in just three months of using heavy grips, hand grippers. So if you want some, some more information about that, you can get them on my website at leehayward.com. Just scroll down through the side menu bar. You'll see a link to the heavy grips hand grippers. Uh, but you can also download that PDF report that I sent you a link to and just do a search on YouTube for some Lee Hayward forearm workouts because they're there. All right. So what else have we got? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and uh, there was a part two to that question. He said, also, would you consider resting between days to maximize your mass potential? I think you mean resting between workouts. Like, I, I personally am a big fan of every other day training. So work out one day, take the next day off. Work out one day, takes the next day off. Um, when I was younger and trying to gain mass, I actually found that to be the most effective routine because when you have that full day of rest in between each workout, you approach your workouts feeling recovered, feeling strong, energetic, and you're able to give it 100% when you go into the gym. And now that I'm older, I find that every other day still works good because it allows me to have that extra recovery time. And not just for the muscles, but for the joints, tendons, and ligaments. I find if I try and train every day or even like four or five days a week, 
like my muscles will probably recover, but I'll just get that nagging joint pain, like in the elbows and the shoulders and the hips and the knees. And it's just this nagging pain that, that lingers. And I find that if I train every other day, that gives the joints, tendons and ligaments time to rest and recover. And it prevents a lot of that joint pain that I used to suffer from. Like I would always be nagging with elbow tendonitis and, you know, shoulders would be stiff and sore and stuff like that. And I find that by having a full day of rest in between each workout, it's it's reduced my joint pain significantly, and I feel so much better. So that's why I'm I'm a big advocate of, of three days a week or every other day. You know, I find that that is the ideal split or, or frequency or whatever you want to call it. That's the ideal one for me. And a lot of my coaching students that I'm working with, I, I get them following like an every other day workout, and. More often than not, it works well for them. Now, there's some cases where I'll, I'll recommend more frequent workouts, depending on the individual and the situation. But a lot of times, we kind of default to uh, every other day, and it works well for most people. Okay, let us see what else we have. Boom. Peter is joining us, and he says, "How long do you think it takes for muscles to fully recover? For most people, 48 hours or five to seven days after a hard workout." It really depends on what you did for that workout. Like the, there's no magic answer in terms of, oh, it takes X number of hours for a muscle to recover. Because let's just say your workout is a total body workout and you go into the gym and you do one exercise per muscle group, right? So for chest, for example, we do chest press. We do three sets of 10 on the chest press. That's all you did for chest. It's going to recover a lot quicker with one exercise done for three sets, then if you went in there and did some old school Arnold Schwarzenegger, 20 sets per body part, chest workout, right? So how long it takes to recover depends on what you did. I mean, the more exercises you do, the more volume, the more intensity you train with, the more you're gonna break down that muscle and the longer it's gonna take for that muscle to recover and grow. Versus if you just go in there and do a little short mini workout, uh, it's gonna be able to recover fairly quickly. So th there's no one size fits all answer for that. It really depends on what you did to, to break down the muscle in the first place will determine on how long it takes to recover afterwards. Uh, Abrams joining us and he says, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Glad you enjoy the video chats and thanks for tuning in. We have Was Wasif, I, I guess that's how I pronounce your name. Wa w -A -S -I -F, W-A-S-I-F, Wasif says, my parents restrict me from tablets like fish oil and stuff like that. What are your thoughts on that? Is it okay in a teenage to take tablets? Look, all right, you're living at home with mom and dad, and they don't want you taking supplements. Guess what? Don't take supplements. Simple as that. Like, you're living under mom and dad's roof. You follow mom and dad's rules, right? When you're out on your own, making your own money, doing your own thing, then you can make your own decisions. Don't get hung up on it. Supplements have a, a very small impact in the overall greater scheme of things. Your workouts, your nutrition, your rest, your recovery, your lifestyle choices, your sleep habits, all that stuff is way more important than what supplements you take. Like if, if we were to put a percentage on it, supplements probably account for like 5% of your progress, whereas 95% is your workouts, your nutrition, your sleep, your lifestyle, all that stuff. Like, so maximize the 95%. Don't go getting hung up on, on that 5%. Maximize the 95 and you will make progress regardless if you're taking your fish oils or, or whatever else. Like, you know, just focus on eating as much good quality food as you can and being consistent with your workouts. That, like, that's it. Don't make it any more complicated than that. As you get older, and again, you're, you're making your own decisions, you're living on your own, and, and you're more advanced with your workouts, then yeah, then you can look into supplements to help, you know, maximize 100% of your potential. But for now, j just focus on, on the bigger picture, right? Focus on being consistent with the workouts and the nutrition. Don't get hung up with the nitty gritty details of, you know, mom and dad don't want me taking supplements. That, that's that's very common for, for teenagers. Like most parents don't want them even working out for that matter, but you know, do the best you can. There we go. We have Bono Bo is joining us. He says, Lee, I really like your start again series. I've been training in my garage for years and started to get a bit bored with it. I'll probably go back to it or use it more as a backup gym. Cool. All right. Well, glad you like that start again series. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be making more 
series geared towards the more mature lifter and because that's where i'm heading to right i mean i can still relate to the young guys i mean i started working out when i was 12 so i mean i know what it's like for a teenager to struggle to try and build muscle and get in shape and all that i mean i've been through that but now i'm transitioning into the over 40 category i mean I, the, today is my birthday i'm 41 years old today and so i'm in that second half of life right you know, I've, so I, I want to focus on maximizing that second half of life. And it's different. You know, it, there, there's different goals, different priorities, and you have to have a different approach when you're older versus when you're, you know, a teenager who's just trying to bulk up and pack on size. There's, you know, it, it takes a different mindset and approach. And the, the older you get, the more you have to respect your body and, and be more keen to and injury prevention. Like when I was younger, like I, I used to use horrendous form in the gym and I'd get away with it just because I had youth on my side and the joints, tendons and ligaments didn't have years of abuse and, I, and they could recover from shitty form and, and just stupid long workouts. Like I can remember going in, working out for like three hours at a time when I was a teenager. That's, I, I'd never be able to do that now. Like if I tried to do the same crazy stuff that I, I used to do, I would just be laid up, beat up, feeling like crap. I just physically cannot handle that anymore. I have to be a lot more respectful of my body and pay more attention to my nutrition. Like back when I was younger, I could eat pretty much anything I want in terms of junk food and crap and, and still stay lean. It doesn't work that way anymore. I have to be very particular about what I eat, you know, or else I'm just going to get fat. So it, it, it changes, right? As you, as your body changes, your approach has to change. And so the videos and stuff that I'm going to be putting out there are going to be geared more towards people of my own age because it's what I'm going through right now. So you will see a lot more of the, the over 40 type of, of videos for, for fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle because that's what I'm really passionate about at this stage. All right, another question there says, I liked your idea of training good enough and not being perfect. 80% effort consistently is better than 100% effort inconsistently. Oh, that is... I'm glad I'm glad you you resonate with that because that is that is the key to this. Like so many people have this all or nothing mentality. And, and what I mean by that is like I'm going to be 100% perfect, I'm going to go all in. And okay, there's nothing wrong with going all in, but the pro except the, that you can't maintain all in all the time, right? It's it's only short term. Like I don't care who you are, how motivated you are, whatever. You can't go pedal to the metal all the time. Eventually life is going to throw some curveballs. You're going to have other priorities come your way or you're going to get injured or something's going to happen that prevents you from going pedal to the metal all the time. And you have to realize that you don't have to go all or nothing. Like sometimes good enough is good enough, right? Good enough consistently is better than a hundred percent balls to the wall inconsistent, inconsistently. So yeah, I'm glad you resonate with that. Right. Like in, in my case, I've been able to maintain a lean, healthy physique for the longest that I've ever have. I mean, even back when I was competing in bodybuilding, like I would only get ripped for a few months at a time and then I couldn't stand it anymore. I'd give into the cravings and binge on my diet and blew them back up again. I mean, I went through yo-yo dieting for years, right? I diet like a madman for a few months before a show and I would be so deprived and so, uh, just sick of, of boiled chicken and broccoli. That's what I kind of lived on. And plus uh, two hours a day in the gym and endless cardio. I mean, I do that for months on end and I just get sick of it. So I went the all in approach and I could only do it for, for so long, you know, three to four months or whatever. And then as soon as the contest was over, I would just go back to my old habits. I binge, I cut out the cardio, eat all kinds of crap. And the weight that took me months to lose, I'd have it all piled back on in a matter of weeks, right? And I'd just do it over and over and over again. And I did that for years when I was competing in bodybuilding. Now I take a, a more moderate approach. And I've actually been able to maintain a lean, healthy, comfortable physique without feeling like I'm struggling, without starving myself, without depriving myself, and going through the emotional ups and downs of this all or nothing. Like, I, I hate that approach, the all or nothing approach. I'm much more comfortable with the, let's just be good enough, but be good enough consistently over the long term. And once you not only intellectually know it, but you physically adapt it and start living it as a lifestyle, it takes the stress out of fitness. 
It really does. I mean, that's been a game changer for me, right? Because in the past, I, I had that all or nothing mentality and I hated it. I mean, yes, it works in the short term and you can get ripped for, you know, a contest or a photo shoot or a beach vacation or whatever the heck you're trying to get ripped for in the, in the short term, but it's not lasting. It doesn't last long term. And that's why I don't like it. Whatever I do now, I want it to be a long term solution. I'm sick and tired of these, you know, get ripped quick, you know, lose a bunch of weight only to rebound and gain it all back again. Like if, if you don't enjoy the process, whatever progress you make is only going to be temporary. You have to enjoy it. You have to be able to, to maintain it. It has to be a lifestyle. And if it's not a lifestyle, then it, it's not going to work. Like I see people going on these crazy low carb keto diets or starving themselves or doing some crazy fasting programs or whatever. I mean, Okay, yeah, you can lose a bunch of weight by doing that, but can you maintain it? Like, can can you visually see yourself eating zero carbs for the rest of your life? Like, never have another carb for as long as you live. Do you think you can do that? No. Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to maintain that kind of progress, right? You have to have the balance in there. So that's why I'm a big fan of of having this balanced approach, and I find that. It's, it's fun. Like I can maintain it and I can enjoy it. And that's the key. If you don't maintain it and enjoy it, then it's only a short term thing. You're going to bound rebound back to your old ways. As soon as you stop that nose to the grindstone approach. Anyway, let's move on. I, I could talk about that for, for hours. That's, that's the stuff that I really focus on when I'm, when I'm working with my one-on-one -on -one coaching students, because it, it's that mindset shift that changes everything. Like once you fully understand that and, and adapt it, it it's it's truly a game changer all right we have woodulos is joining us and he's wishing me a happy birthday with a cake emoji well thank you very much my friend i do appreciate it and i will be going out and having some cake tonight myself and my wife we've got dinner reservations and i fully intend on having a good generous helping of birthday cake <laughs> Omar is joining us again, or he's, he's, he's always been joining us. He's got another question again. That's what I should say. He says, I do, I don't even know what the heck that word is. I do Syrian masker. I, I, all right. I don't even, I have no idea what you're asking there or what you're saying that. And he says, I do push ups as a warm up, 40 of each. Is it possibly too much? I really don't know if it's too much because I don't know what the heck you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do a quick little Google search because you got myself, you got me curious there now. I got to see what the heck. I'm going to Google search that word and see what the heck it is. And, and Google don't even know what it is. I guess it's, is it something like a, a yoga pose or an upward downward dog type of thing? I don't know. I just, I'm just going to Google images. So, Anyway, I can't really answer your question because I don't know what it is. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, Lee, I heard that you should switch it up, switch up exercises using dumbbells instead of a barbell sometimes to challenge the body in different ways when it's become too efficient. Is it true? Sure, you can do that. And it, it, how you go about it, it, it really depends on, on you, your program, your progress. Like, if you are following a program and you're using barbells, like barbell bench press, for example, and you're enjoying it and you're seeing progress and, and you're, you're, you're making gains, then, then keep doing it. Like you don't have to change it just for the sake of changing it. If you're enjoying it, you're making progress, keep doing what you're doing, right? Ride out that wave of momentum. But if you get to the point where you find that, okay, you're starting to plateau with the barbell bench press or you're just getting bored with it, or or maybe it's causing some some problems, like maybe your shoulders or your elbows are just hurting, you find, you know, I, I just don't, getting tired of the barbell bench press, then you can change it up, right? Then you can go through a phase where you're doing dumbbell bench presses, or maybe you're doing some different, uh, you know, machine variations, like hammer strength, or whatever you have available at your gym. But uh, th that's usually the way I recommend it. Like, change it up when your body is giving you those hints that it's time to change. But if you're making progress and you're enjoying what you're doing, then ride out that wave of momentum, right? Milk it for what it's worth. And then when your your body's giving you the cues that, hey, you know, it's time to change, either just because you're, you've hit a plateau with your gains or your joints are, are telling you, you know, they're, they're sore, there's aches or pains, 
or whatever, right? I mean, when, when you get the cue that it's time to change, then by all means, change it up. All right, we have D. Gat joining us. And he says, looking bigger and leaner, good stuff. Thank you much. I do appreciate it. I'm not any bigger, but I have gotten leaner. And then when you get leaner, indirectly, you look bigger, right? You know, that's, but no, I'm, I'm smaller than I've been in years. But of course, when you're leaner, you kind of look a bit bigger and fuller. Uh, Abram is joining us, says, I have to get back to work. Thanks for the advice. I'm sure you do. I hope you're, hope you don't get in trouble, right? Right. Your boss is wondering, what the heck are you doing? I'm watching Lee Hayward on YouTube. <laughs> I hope you don't get fired because you've been watching the live video chat on YouTube. We have RC Cosplay saying, walking to the food market, like you said, I always try to be active. I could have taken a motor vehicle, but no, I am walking. Good for you. Anytime you can squeeze in any extra activity, like walking, is fantastic. Uh, Wasif is joining us, and he says, I was squatting 80 kilograms. My max is 120 kilograms, but when I did six reps of 80, suddenly I felt someone hammering my head in the back. What is it? All right, I'm assuming you're not literally meaning someone was hammering you in the head but you say you probably felt like someone was hammering you in the head. All right. I, I, I really don't know what that was. I mean, it could be an exertion headache. I've got a video that talks about exertion headaches, right? In fact, that's what I would recommend. Based on what you just said there, I would say it's probably an exertion headache. So do a search for Lee Hayward exertion headaches, and I've got a full video that goes into detail explaining what they are, uh, what causes them, and how to avoid them. All right, Omar is joining us again, and he says, how much time a week should you hit the gym? I usually go six days a week, Sunday off. Is it okay, or is it too much? I've been working out for two months. Jesus, two, you've been, you're going to the gym six days a week, and you've only started two months ago. Now, personally, I go to the gym three days a week, right? I find three days a week is plenty. I can get, I can make gains. I enjoy the process. I'm not living in the gym. I still have a life outside the gym, so... For me, three days a week, tops, that's what I enjoy. Uh, now, in addition to that, I will do exercise outside the gym. Like, I'll go for walks or I'll go for bike rides or, or whatever. I mean, I like to get outside and do real-world exercise as well. But personally, for someone who's just starting off, if you're doing six days of weight training, I mean, I mean I'm not going to deter you from it. I mean, if, if you're doing it and you enjoy it and everything else, then keep doing it. But it is a lot, right? I mean, that's, that's the upper limits. I mean... Six days a week is, is pretty much every day, right? I mean, personally, I don't like to go to the gym every day. Like I've mentioned in the earlier questions and stuff, I've actually made my best gains training every other day. I, you know, a lot of people neglect the benefit of rest days. Like your body doesn't grow when you're in the gym lifting weights. It grows when you're resting and recovering in between those workouts. So if your goal is to kind of build muscle, get stronger, working out every day can actually be counterproductive, right? I, I've I've personally made my best strength gains uh, and, and muscle gains by working up every other day and having a full day of rest in between each workout. But with that being said, do what you feel works the best for you. Jesse is asking, Lee, uh, hope all is well. When doing the incline barbell bench press, do you need to go all the way to the chest or stop short of it? I personally go all the way down. I like to do a full range of motion with all my bench press variations, be that uh, an incline press, a flat bench press, whatever. I personally like to do a full range of motion. Now, with that being said, some it, it kind of depends on your body structure as well. Because if you're very tall and slim, like, you know, an, an ectomorph type physique, then you have longer arms and a thinner torso. You have a lot more range of motion there. So, Use your own discretion on that, right? I mean, it for me, with my body type, everything else, I like to do full range of motion, and meaning I, I touch the barbell to my chest with each rep. Uh, but if, if you find that that is either doesn't work well for you or you find it hard or causes overstretching in the shoulder joint or whatever because maybe you got really long arms and a really th thin chest, then you can play around with it. I mean, there's different variations, like... Uh, you can do like board press variations to shorten up the range of motion. And in fact, the, the gym that I train at, we actually have these 
blocks that you can attach. They're foam blocks that attach to the barbell and you can use it to shorten your range of motion just the same as you would for a board press in, in powerlifting. And that's what it basically mimics. And there, you can set it up in different ways. So you can have maybe it's going to shorten the range of motion by a couple inches all the way up to maybe like four or five inches. So it, it's another little variation that you can do. Um, shit, what are they called? Let me, I'm just going to do a Google search and see if I can find them for you. Um, I, um, let's just see if I can find it there. Um, I, I'm not gonna, I, it'll take me forever to find it because I don't know the technical name for it off the top of my head. So I'm not going to waste any time searching for it because I would literally just be wasting time. But. If, if I find the name of it, I'll put it down in the video description of the replay, right? But it, it's, it's just this block that you would literally attach to the barbell of the bench press, and it shortens the range of motion. So when you bring the barbell down, if, if you want to shorten it up, you can literally touch your chest so you get that cue, but you're not going all the way down to overstretch your shoulders and, and tendons and ligaments. Again, um, so yeah, it really depends on the individual, right? I, I A lot of this does. I mean, the there's really very few one size fits all answers out there. It really depends on the individual because we all have different body types. We're all at different stages of our training. All right. Daniel's joining us. He says, does the deadlift help to be build a bigger upper body? Yes. The deadlift does help to build a bigger upper body. It's just going to hit your traps, your back, your lats, your spinal erectors. I mean, it hits all those muscles of the upper body. Plus, you're still going to get your core and your hips and your legs in there as well. So it's, it's really a total body exercise. Ralph is joining us. Cyber, Cyber Nathan, I think it is. Cyber Nathan saying, which is better in your opinion, a full body three times a week or your latest push-pull split Monday? It, it's not one is right or wrong, better or worse. It really depends on you, your situation, and where you're starting from. Um for a beginner just getting started, I'd recommend three uh, full body workouts a week. If you're more advanced and you want to add in more exercise variety, then you can do some sort of a split routine, maybe like a push-pull legs. But it's it's not better. It, it depends on the individual and where you're at in your training. Uh, Frederick's asking if he can train calves the day before legs. I do calves. Uh, do calves come into play when squatting? Yes, they do come into play when squatting, but it. it it's probably not going to hinder your, your leg day performance uh, unless you train to the point where your calves are painfully sore. But if, if you're not painfully sore in the calves, then it shouldn't really hinder your, your leg day. I, I personally train calves with leg day. You know, I, I always do my thighs first and then I finish off with calves after. Uh, Jesse's saying happy birthday. I do appreciate it. Thank you much. Uh, Oysen's joining us. He says, sometimes I feel hip pain when I squat or do a sumo deadlift. Can you suggest reasons why? Also, thanks for everything you do. Um, you probably have weak hips. <laughs> all right. When you're, uh, all right, you have hip pain when doing squats and sumo deadlifts. One exercise or two exercises, I should say, that can definitely help with this. The inner and outer thigh machine you see at the gym. Now, I know a lot of guys see the inner and outer thigh, the abductor, adductor machines, and they think that's a woman's exercise, right? They think that's, uh, you know, it's not manly enough. You're not going to catch me in the gym opening and closing my legs under resistance, right? <laughs> but that is a fantastic exercise for building up the hips. And uh, I would definitely recommend that as an assistance exercise. Uh, it, I mean, you get strong in those moves, it will carry over into your squat. It will carry over into your deadlift. Absolutely. Also, just general stretching and mobility for the lower body. Like a lot, most guys do not stretch nearly enough. So after your workouts, do some stretching. You know, I've, I've got a stretching playlist. In fact, you go to my main YouTube channel, open up the playlists and thumb through them, and you'll see there's a stretching playlist series, and it covers stretches for all your major muscle groups. So after every workout, you can do five minutes of stretching afterwards. 
And I'm telling you, that five minutes of stretching post-workout will make such a big difference. And it'll help to improve your, your mobility. It'll help to aid with recovery. It'll help to reduce muscle soreness. And it'll help to improve some of these weak links that you're probably experiencing. Like in your case now, the hip pain when you're squatting and deadlifting. Building up the hips and, and doing some good stretching and mobility work very often can help fix that. All right, guys, I'm going to have to clue this up because, as I mentioned, it is my birthday today and my wife has dinner reservations for us. So we have to get going. I've got to get, jump in the shower, get cleaned up and ready to go. So uh, obviously, I'm not going to be able to answer everybody's question. I do appreciate all the questions and support nonetheless, but I will have to clue it up for the week and we'll pick it up again next Friday. So have yourself a fantastic weekend and I look forward to talking to you later. Take care. Over and out.